millions of people around the world, men and women, suffer from overactive bladder. Maybe you are one of them. And if you've tried behavioral therapies or medications without success, you may be looking at what the next step should be for you. Today, we'll talk about one of the so-called advanced or third-line therapies for overactive bladder. You probably have heard of Botox therapy for other uses, but you may not know that one of the most common uses for this medication is to treat refractory overactive bladder. We'll explore this in depth today on the OAB Clinic. In overactive bladder, or OAB, nerve signals from the bladder make you feel as if your bladder is full, even though it probably isn't. These signals can cause you to feel like you want to urinate urgently and can even lead to urinary leakage. Nerve endings in the bladder are the target of medications treating overactive bladder, but in some patients, medications may not be able to control the signals or may cause side effects that can limit treatment. Botox is injected into the bladder lining and can be effective at blocking these nerve messages at the level of the bladder. Unlike other OEB medications, Botox has a more direct effect on the bladder and rarely causes side effects outside of the bladder. It works in a different way from medications that you take by mouth, so Botox can be effective even in patients who haven't improved with other medications. Botox is used in people with refractory overactive bladder. This means that they have symptoms that either don't respond to medication or behavioral therapies, or they're not able to take those medications for another reason, like side effects. So what is it like to have Botox injected for OAB? Botox is injected through a needle, much like any other injection you might receive, such as a flu shot. However, because the location is inside of the bladder, a long scope called a cystoscope is used to visualize the bladder and then guide the injections. Most people tolerate having this performed in the office after a numbing medication is placed in the bladder, but others prefer light sedation during the injections. You can choose whichever you prefer. After two weeks, most people will usually begin to see some improvement. Like all treatments for OAB, Botox is not a permanent cure for the symptoms. Repeated treatments are necessary and are usually about six months apart, though some patients will require injections more or less often. But how well does Botox work for overactive bladder? It can be difficult to give just one number for success with Botox for the bladder because many of the medical studies either looked at different doses of the medication or treatment of different types of symptoms. But when you look at all of the studies together, the range of response is around 60 to 80% of patients that show at least 50% of improvement, and about half of patients seeing a 75% reduction in their symptoms. For patients who have an incomplete response to a standard injection of 100 units of overactive bladder, they can be treated again with an increase in the amount of Botox that's injected. Higher doses, though, may be associated with higher rates of unwanted side effects. The improvement seen with Botox is impressive given the fact that the response rates were seen in patients who have not seen improvement oftentimes with multiple medications and have moderate or even severe OAB. Botox is able to effectively treat even those patients who've had few other options. The number of patients who have at least 75% reduction in symptoms is also notable. You may also ask, what are the risks of Botox for OAB? So the most common risk associated with Botox injections into the bladder is development of a urinary tract infection. There may be several reasons for this risk. First of all, simply putting a cystoscope into the bladder for any reason carries a small risk of urinary tract infection. Botox can also make it more difficult to empty your bladder, which could increase the risk of developing a UTI. An antibiotic is prescribed for you for the first few days after your Botox treatment to try to reduce the risk. Because of the way in which Botox affects the nerves of the bladder, trouble urinating and emptying your bladder is another possible risk. 
This risk is probably related to the amount of Botox injected, and lower doses of Botox should result in lower rates of emptying problems. This is the main reason why most people begin with 100 units of Botox to treat overactive bladder. Trouble urinating and emptying your bladder can become so severe that some people may even need to use a catheter to empty, though this effect wears off over time. But how common is it not to be able to urinate after Botox? Again, it's difficult to give a single number for that risk because different studies looked at higher or lower dosages and in different kinds of patients. However, it's thought that after an injection of 100 units of Botox, most people have about a 10% risk of having some trouble urinating, and only about 3 to 6% have a risk of actually having to catheterize at least one time. Both of these effects are not permanent. I would make a few additional points about Botox and the risks of not emptying your bladder. First, while it's not a common complication, it is bothersome when it happens, and it's bothersome enough that I think most people would want to know about this risk, and I always discuss this with anyone thinking about Botox therapy. However, it's also important to note that a 3 to 6% risk of patients needing to catheterize is the same thing as saying that 94 to 97% of patients will not need to catheterize. So the risk of retention should be considered when you're thinking about this therapy, but I wouldn't let it scare you away from the therapy. It can be very frustrating to suffer from overactive bladder, especially if it results in urinary incontinence. What can be even more frustrating is if you don't see the usual responses to combinations of behavioral changes and medications. It can make you feel like you're at the end of a road, but that simply isn't true. There are several advanced therapies for overactive bladder. Botox for OAB is one of those effective therapies. Like any treatment, there are certainly risks, but if you have moderate or severe overactive bladder symptoms, you may find that the potential for improvement outweighs the risks for you. If you enjoyed learning more about OAB today, please like or subscribe this channel and stay up to date with more information about bladder health. Or visit the OAB Clinic website at oabclinic.com for even more discussion about bladder and pelvic health. Thanks for joining today and I hope you've come closer to finding your better bladder.